James tells us that our tongue is a very small rudder, but it pilots a very large ship. And even though that ship can be tossed about by the wind, that rudder guides that ship. James also goes on to say, out of the same mouth proceeds, or how can out of the same mouth proceed blessings and cursings? He really says, out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursings. My brother, these things ought not to be so. Does spring send forth fresh water and bitter water from the same opening? You know, we get into from the abundance of a man's heart comes out of his mouth. And, and what I really want to focus on is I want to focus on just for a couple minutes that there is power in the words you say. For example, in 1852, the preamble for the state of Ohio is, we the people of the state of Ohio, grateful to Almighty God for our freedom to secure its blessings. Those are powerful, powerful words that were spoken by founding members of the state of Ohio, by the governing body of the state. They were making a declaration, and it's like Pastor Ted said, when we stand up and begin to declare Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior and the King and the only God of America like what's being done, the devil, not people, but the devil is going to rise up and try to tear that down. Listen to this. Listen to this preamble that was written in 1879. We, the people of a certain state, are grateful to Almighty God for our freedoms. Here's, here's the state, California. We, the people of the state of California, are grateful to Almighty God. Do you know every, every service I always speak a blessing? May God bless you because you, you know what? I know that there is power in our words. L let, me go, let me go here. I got a few uh, things. I'm, I'm kind of jumping around. I had my notes all really laid out in order and everything. And now all of a sudden I'm just going for it. Um, Just give me a minute here. What is patriotism? What is patriotism? Noah's, Noah Webster's dictionary definition in 1828 said patriotism is love of one's country, the passion which aims to serve one's country, either in defending it from invasion or protecting its rights and maintaining its laws and institution in vigor and purity. Patriotism is the characteristic of a good, uh, of a good citizen. The noblest passion that emanates a man in the character of a citizen. That was in 1828. Listen to 2004, the, uh, the, the other Webster's Dictionary. It says, love or devotion for one's country. Love or devotion for one's country. In 1828, Noah Webster said, the love of one's country, the passion which aims to serve one's, he began to unveil what patriotism, he, he began to make a declaration of what patriotism was. And in the 1828 version of Noah Webster's dictionary, when you would look up, there was a lot of Christianity that was used in defining words in America. Let me, let me read another interesting little quote here to you. Again, we're focusing on the power of words, the power of words and patriotism. Based on what James, or excuse me, yeah, based on what James tells us, that rudder that guides that ship. Patriotism, number, Numbers chapter 12, verse 7, and it says, not so with my servant Moses, this is, and Numbers chapter 12 is the dissension of, or 
yeah, the dissension of, of Aaron and, and Miriam when they were trying to come in and say, hey, Moses isn't the only one that can operate here. And God speaks and says, not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. Moses was patriotic to God. He was patriotic to God. Listen to the, to the purest patriotism written by Stephen Grover Cleveland. How many recognize that name? Stephen Grover Cleveland, who served as both the 22nd and the 24th president of the United States, all must admit that the reception of the teachings of Christ result in the purest patriotism, in the most scrupulous fidelity to public trust, and in the best type of citizenship. Those who manage the affair of government are by this means reminded that the law of God demands that they should be courageously true to the interest of the people and that the ruler of the universe will require of them a strict account for their stewardship. The teachings of both human and divine law, thus merging into one word, duty, from the only union of the church and state that a civil and religious government can recognize. These are our founding fathers talking to us not only about patriotism, but about, about God and the importance of God. Listen, listen to this as well, if you will, for a minute. In recent years, this, this is, while much has been written in recent years, to try to dismiss the fact that America was founded upon biblical principles of Judeo-Christianity, all the revisionism in the world cannot change the facts. Anyone who examines the original writings, personal correspondence, biographies, and public statements of the individuals who were instrumental in founding the founding of America will find an abundance of quotations showing the profound extent to which their thinking and lives were influenced by Christian, by a Christian worldview. That is not to say that all the founding fathers were Christians. Clearly they were not. But the point is that even those who were not Christians were deeply influenced by the principles of Christianity, a Christian uh, Christianity, a mindset that helped to shape their political ideas. It is possible to be so uh, excuse me, it is possible to be so distracted with whether or not Benjamin Franklin or Thomas Jefferson ever put their faith in Jesus Christ uh, that one uh, misses the fact that the founders almost all through biblical perspective, whether they believed it or not, a lot of our founding fathers were, were, were ministers as well. Let me read some more to you. Do you guys mind this stuff? I just, I eat this stuff up. Because I believe in the power of our spoken words. I believe in the words that we speak and we release, they come to life. When you take a look at the words that have been spoken and released, you can see how it has come to life, but not in a godly way, in a demonic, in a, in a, in a fearful way. And I believe that when we release these words, when we speak words out, we speak life or we speak death. Because again, James tells us that even though that ship might be mighty, it's guided by a very small rudder. Listen to this statement. It cannot be emphasized too clearly and too often that this nation was founded not only by religious, but by Christians. Not on, not, not on religion, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Anybody have an idea who penned that? Patrick Henry. Remember him? He was the governor of Virginia. Principally and first of all, I give and rec uh, recommend my soul into the hands of God and give it. And my body I recommend to the earth. Nothing, uh, nothing doubting but at the general resurrection, I shall receive the same again by the mercies and the power of God. That was John Hancock. Providence has come to our people, the choice, their rulers. And it is the duty as well as the privilege and interest of our Christian nation to select and prefer Christians for their rulers. 
I was going to say, does anybody know who that was written by? Does anybody know who John, John Jay was? John Jay? I wouldn't have, if I hadn't gotten this Bible right here as a gift. <laughs> John Jay, he was the first Supreme Court. He was the first Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. The first Chief Justice. He says, Providence has given our people the choice of their rulers. And it is the duty as well as the privilege and interest of our Christian nation to select and prefer Christians for their rulers. It's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. It's amazing the words that were spoken and released over the United States of America at her birth. We do baby dedications, and, and I try to listen to what the Holy Spirit of God is saying to me when, these, when, people, when you bring your babies to have them dedicated. I want to prophetically speak the word that the Lord is laying in my spirit over that child because I know that words have power. How many knows that words have power this morning? How many knows that? Words have power. And, and, and it just amazes me when I hear the words that were spoken and, and, and how the enemy, and it's, listen, don't think of a person or a political party. Do you understand? It is the devil himself that is trying to split and divide. If he can divide, he can conquer. If he can divide, he can conquer. That's why unity in the family is so important. That's why unity between husband and wife is so important. Because if he can bring disunity between husband and wife, he can conquer the family. If he can bring disunity into the United States of America, he can divide and conquer this country. But I say enough is enough in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I say enough is enough. I say we get on our knees and we start praying and seeking the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I say we start standing in the gap for this mighty nation that God has given us a time to live in. Wow. I want to read something. I got some reading here. I want to read something to you. You ready? Yeah. Psalms 35. Plead my cause, O Lord, with those who strive with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Also draw out the spear and stop those who pursue me. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. Let those who put to shame let, let those be put to shame and brought to dishonor who seek after my life. Let those who turn back and brought back to confusion who plot my hurt. Let them be like shaft before the wind and let the angels of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord pursue them. For without cause they have hidden their net for me in a pit, which they have dug without cause for my life. Let destruction come upon him unexpectedly, and let his net that he has hidden catch himself into that very destruction. Let, for, let him fall. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like you? Deliver the poor from him who is too strong for him. Yes, the poor and the needy from him who plunder him. Fierce witnesses raise up. They ask me things that I don't know. They reward me evil for good to the sour of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was, was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting. And my prayer, would, my prayer would return to my own heart. I paced about as though he were my friend and, or brother. I bowed down heavily as one who mourns for his mother. But in my adversity, they rejoiced and gathered together. Attackers gathered against me, and I did not know it. 
They tore at me and did not cease. With ungodly mockers and feast, they gnashed at me with their teeth. Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue me from their destruction. My precious life from the lions. I will give you thanks in the great assembly. I will praise you among many people. Let them not rejoice over me who are, wrong, uh, who are wrongfully my enemies, nor let them wink with their eye who hate me without cause. For they do not speak peace, but they, des they devise deceitful matters against the quiet ones in the land. They also open their mouth wide against me and say, Aha, our eyes have seen it. This you have seen, O Lord. Do not keep silent. O Lord, do not be far from me. Stir up, your, stir up yourself and awaken to my vindication. To my cause, my God and my Lord. Vindicate me, O Lord, my God, according to your righteousness. And let them not rejoice over me. Let them not say in their hearts, ah, so we would have had it. Let them not say we have swallowed him up. Let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion who rejoice at my hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor who exalt themselves against me. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all day long. We're going to step back to September 1774. That was Psalms 35. And immediately following that, I'm going to ask every head to bow and every eye to close, and I want you to listen carefully. O Lord, our heavenly Father, high and mighty, King, King of kings and Lord of lords, who does from thy throne behold all the dwellers on the earth, and reign us with power supreme, uncontrolled over all the kingdoms, empires, and governments. Look down in mercy, we beseech thee, on these our American states who have fled to thee from the rod of the oppressor and thrown themselves at thy gracious protection, desiring to be henceforth dependent only on thee. To thee have they appealed for righteousness of their cause. To thee do they now look up that countenance and support which thou alone canst give. Take them therefore, Heavenly Father, under thy nurturing care. Give them wisdom and counsel and valor in the field. Defeat the malice designs of our cruel adversaries. Consi uh, convince them of their unrighteousness, of their cause, and if they persist in their sanguinary purposes of own un unerring justice, sounding in their hearts, constrain them to drop them, uh, to drop weapons of war from their un unnerved hands in the day of battle. Be thou present, O God of wisdom. And direct the counsel of this honorable assembly. Enable them to settle things on the best and surest foundation. That the scene of blood may be speedily closed. That order, harmony, and peace may be effectually restored. And truth and justice, religion and piety prevail and flourish among the people. Preserve the health of their bodies and vigor of their minds. Shower down on them and millions they here represent. Such temporal blessings as thou seest expedient for them in this world and the crown and crown them with the everlasting glory in the world to come. All these things we ask in the name and through the merits of Jesus Christ, thy Son and thy Savior. Amen. This is how the first congressional session in the United States 
started by a prayer, by a minister by the name of uh, Duche, Jacob Duche. And in September of 1774, he opened up the Bible to Psalms 35, in which afterwards John Adams stated in a letter to his wife, I never saw a greater effect upon an audience. It seemed as if heaven had ordained that psalm to be read this morning. That's called the first prayer in Congress. The first prayer prayer in Congress. And Reverend Jacob had a prayer all written out, but he went off course and he prayed this from his heart. What an incredible prayer. You just, you just sat in the same experience as our first Congress sat in as that opening day of prayer of Congress took place. I talk about patriotism and I'm closing. I talked about what patriotism looks like as an American citizen, as an American. But what does patriotism look like in the word of God? I think it's pretty simple. I don't have enough time to read all the scripture because the Bible is chock full of what patriotism looks like. But when you look at the definition of patriotism, one basically laying down his life for his nation. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven 37 and following. And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let me read another passage in, Mark, in Matthew chapter 28. Jesus says, and we've been teaching on this on Wednesday nights, and it, where all authority was given to him, and Jesus came and spoke to his disciples and said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded. And lo, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Amen. What does patriotism look like in Christianity? I'm going to love the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind. I love the United States of America. She has a lot of flaws. Can I get a witness to that? She's got a lot of flaws, but hey, you know what? When you look in the mirror, when I look in the mirror, I see a lot of flaws in a man. I have a lot of flaws myself. America has a lot of flaws. America's not the most perfect, but I'm telling you, I don't believe there's any other country that I'd rather live in than the United States of America, where I'm allowed to come into a house for now and give God praise and glory, where I'm allowed to assemble now and, 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 and sit in the presence of God in a corporate setting and not have to worry about being arrested for, for, my, for my beliefs. Friend, when we start losing our rights and our privileges, when we start losing our freedoms, let's put it that way, not our rights and our privileges, but when we start losing our freedoms, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I, I'm reading an article about North Korea, and, and they, have a, they have a guy that escaped out of North Korea. He ran for his life. He's like, political prisons are going up all over in thousands, in tens of thousands, political prisoners are, are, are being thrown into prison. It's people who speak out against the government. They, they say, you know what? I, I don't think we should be going this direction. It starts out with political correctness. And it goes and it goes because you know what the devil's trying to do? He's trying to shut the mouth of the church. Words are powerful. Words are powerful, church. Why do you think we have the riots going on? Why do you think we have the chaos and confusion that's going on? Because words are powerful. It's not, it's not a political issue. It's not, trust me, it's a spiritual issue. It's a spiritual issue. It's a spiritual condition. And it was overcome by the blood of the lamb 
And the same answer is true then as it is now. And church, I'm telling you, we need to get on our knees for our nation. We don't need to talk about this or talk about that. We need to get on our knees for our nation and we need to seek God's word and we need to live God's. That's what Jesus needs right now from us is living his word out. What does patriotism look like in the church? Loving the Lord with all your heart, loving the Lord with all your soul, loving the Lord with all your mind. Stand with me as we close, would you please?